let's take some time and talk about asset management. Well, before we get into that, what is an asset? An asset is simply any device, system, piece of hardware, networking equipment that is owned by the organization, the business, that is used for business activities. That's not to say it must specifically be used for business activities, but think about any you know digital or physical device that an organization would own and manage. That is an asset to them. It's important that we track these assets because we cannot protect what we do not know about. And this is a huge concern in larger organizations because they have such distributed networks across geographic regions, different network systems managed by different teams. They might have some systems managed by third-party contractors or service providers. And getting visibility over the assets that the organization owns can be a very challenging task. So really, like I said before, the big problem is if you don't know about it, you can't protect it. It is a threat to the organization. It presents in of itself a vulnerability. It can be compromised and used to pivot from that vulnerable or an unknown device to attack other company assets, and we certainly don't want that. Traditionally, asset management, the activity of identifying assets and tracking them, usually falls within the responsibility of the information technology team, not inherently a security process. However, it's imperative that security has a good visibility over what devices that exist in the organization and how those devices are configured. And we can't even begin to talk about configuration management unless we know what assets belong to the business. So to be able to get to the level at which we can start to monitor the unique configuration of devices in the network, we have to get our asset inventory down. We've got to be aware of the types of devices that are within the organization, whether those are computers, laptops, printers. We have to know what software is installed, what versions of software, when was it installed, when was the last update applied. We've got to have the associated information about these devices. What are the IP addresses or host names? We have to be able to reference these in our network. In network communications, everything has its own unique address or name that is used to refer to it for communications and tracking and management. So we have to collect all this type of data so that we can essentially create reports on what exists within the organization, how it's set up, where it's located, what business entity owns those assets, because it might not always be owned or belong to the IT team. In larger organizations, there's definitely instances where that business unit purchases their own devices and systems for their unique use cases. And IT sometimes don't know those purchases have been made, Thus, we have issues with shadow IT and systems in the network. So it's the cyclical process of trying to find assets, get insight into who owns them, how are they configured, what we need to do to secure them. And I hope one thing you've learned from this, really a lot of the problems here exist from a breakdown in communication between what business does, what IT needs to be doing, and how that supports security. We have three generalized groups of individuals who need to work and communicate better together, and we also need the tools and technology that allow us to actively and passively identify these assets and log and, and keep records of these systems in the network. So to be able to go out and identify these assets in the network, there's a few common ways in which that's done. The first being network scanning. This is usually a paid for solution or a free tool, could be either or, that are used to actively scan. So what does actively scanning mean? It means to send data out on the network for the purpose of getting another system to talk back to it. If I can reach out and say, hey, is there anybody in this network? And they respond, yeah, I'm in the network. Well, I've just identified assets. And the characteristics and how it talks back to me, the information it provides me when it responds helps me understand what type of device it is. Windows computers, Mac or Apple computers, and Linux machines, each of these devices when they respond, each have subtle ways in which they respond or what data they provide. And those unique characteristics about that response allows us to identify what devices they are. So we're beginning to build that sort of asset inventory through these active scanning methods. We also have logging, generally speaking, on the network. There are many systems that log information about the devices that are using the network. We have DNS, DHCP, uh, there's ARP, there's a lot of protocols you're going to learn when you get into the networking module, but all of this data is in some shape or form logged on various systems. So collecting these logs, these records of activity, allows us to get this passive view as to what is using our network. What devices, what addressing, what host names are they, what device types are they. 
So we can also use that information for asset inventory. So just want to caveat, we can use all of those logging sources, but that does tend to bring in some challenges with getting that data because it's diverse data on distributed systems. We have domain management systems, software deployment solutions, network access control, software agents on systems. We have something they called Radius Server, which you're going to learn about later. Um, so we have all these different generalized types of systems. One thing we could throw in there that's not on the slide is Wi-Fi access points. Wi-Fi access points keep logs of the wireless devices that are connecting to it. So the challenge here is the data exists in our network to do good asset inventory. The problem is, is the data is distributed and it's in different formats and it's saved in different locations in the operating systems and databases and on hard disks of all these disparate devices. So it's up to the IT team, the security team, and even the business that owns these assets to collaborate together in creating a logging solution. Hey, where are we going to send all of these logs? How are we going to standardize these logs? And then once we have that, all that set up, we now have to worry about analyzing those logs and the data therein to start doing this asset inventory analysis. So it's not just about identifying assets. That's the first phase. Really the goal for any large organization, even you know a small or medium sized organization should be managing their assets. That's beyond discovery. If you're focused solely on discovery, you are at step one of your IT asset management process. Essentially, we need to know what assets we have in the organization, what software is installed, where are these assets located, what are the business lines that own them, where's the funding lines that paid for them, what are the business use cases that created these systems to even exist. You would be surprised in a lot of very large organizations, when you start doing asset and inventory management, you find a bunch of servers running and then reach out to that business unit and say, hey, you know, you've got 100 servers running over here in the data center, do you need these? And they're like, oh, wow, no, we don't need those anymore. We shut that product down, you know, two years ago. I have seen this. And how long have we been paying for those systems running? And they've not been managed by anybody. So those are, you know, they present some vulnerabilities to the organization. Have they been updated? Have they been patched? There's a lot of questions that come with that when you don't know about the assets in your network. So the ultimate goal is, is to get to a management phase where we are in a maintenance process where we know about our assets we're looking for changes to those assets we're looking how they're set up who's managing them and we're looking for changes in respect to which devices are no longer on the network what happened to them what devices are now new on the network who are they what are they and why are they here so if you're at the point where you're you're able to quickly identify new devices or devices that have gone you know dark they're not communicating on the network anymore you're doing a really good job in your asset management so Again, NIST provides the 1800-5 specification for how to conduct asset management for your organization. So just like we used in NIST 853 for the cyber risk framework, we provide another checklist here from NIST that allows you to identify what specific tasks you should be doing for a solid asset management program.